Hello everyone, welcome back to another book review. Today I'm going to be reviewing two rather specific books, but they tie into a book that I read last week. So this week, or today, I'm going to be reviewing Flint 18, was it 90 to 1960, and then just Genesee County, which is the county that the city of Flint resides in, in Michigan, 1900 to 1960. And I read, or I got both these books out of the library after reading a book last week called Teardown by Gordon Young, and in Teardown, which I have a whole review video on, there the author has grown up in Flint, Michigan, which has been well known and publicized for economic hardship, uh, among other things. Anyways, the author had grown up there, lived there, moved to California, and was now looking to move back to buy a house. And after reading that book, I thought it would be very interesting to maybe go and see what Flint was like back before there was a lot of economic depression and some of the issues that are going on right now in the city. Um, a disclaimer, I did not grow up in Flint, I do not live in Flint, but I have visited the area many times so I am a little familiar with it, but I do not claim to be an expert and if you do live there or have any opinions, I would definitely like to hear it. I think that would be very interesting to hear from someone who lives there or someone who grew up in the city. So these two books were put out by Genesee County Historical Society. It says right at the bottom. So these are very specific books. So I do not know if your library or bookstore would have them, but it's actually, according to the back, it's part of Arcadia Publishing, which is the leading local history publisher. And they claim to have 3,000 titles in print as of this year, which I think was 2006. Yes, I remember things. So I assume they have more now, and they have a, a map of at least the United States. Yeah, so they do publishing in the United States. So if you do not live in the United States, I assume there is a publisher for your country too. You just have to figure out who it is. But they have a nice little map on the back and they show all, doesn't really pick up well, but all these dots where I assume they have local history books published. So obviously the Genesee County Historical Society is not publishing all of them, but someone from that area is. Anyways, I wanted to go back and see what the area was like before some of the problems that's happening that are happening now in the city. So I started with the Genesee County. Now I will say I got this book out hoping that it would cover Flint because the city of Flint is in Genesee County, but this book did not really cover much about Flint and I think that's because they put out, wow, this book. So this one they focused a lot on all the other things in the county except for the city of Flint, which makes sense. However, this was not a complete waste of time in tying back to the Teardown book because in the Teardown book, Gordon Young mentions a lot of the suburbs and kind of the role they played in interacting with the city or his perception of the suburbs. And he stayed with a friend in one of the suburbs in one of the uh, chapters of the book or in one of his visits to the cities. So this was really interesting in that perspective. So this shows 1900 to 1960. And these were all postcards. So these books were both compiled from postcards of the area. And then someone from the Historical Society, I assume, did some research and wrote a little blurb. So this is really interesting to kind of see the suburbs, see all the churches. They have basketball teams of the area. Montrose, Montrose. I don't know how to say that. I assume that's a city. High school basketball team in 1915. I just find this fascinating. I think it'd be really fun to take a road trip around with this book and see if I could find some of these places. Obviously, like, this is the bookmobile that um, the library used right up here. This thing, is, or, uh, this thing isn't going to be in production anymore. I'm not going to be able to drive and go see the bookmobile, I assume. But like the, the houses, as long as they weren't torn down, and they, they tend to be pretty good about um, telling me what was torn down. I could go and see some of this stuff, and I think that would be a really interesting day trip for, yeah. So I'm going to have to look into that. So this was interesting, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking um, for. Still good enough. I believe I gave this a four star. I'm just a sucker for old photos. This could be from anywhere, anywhere in the world and I would be fascinated. This was a lot more what I was looking for. This is from 1890 to 1960, and so this covers Flint, particularly during its economic booms, I'm gonna say. I assume that's what they are. So Flint, and this is something I did not know, they made carriages, like horse-drawn carriages, 
before they got into vehicle automobile production, which is what they're primarily known for, and then its lack of automobile production, which has kind of led to some of its economic problems. So right on the cover, they have Flint Vehicle City on this little arch, um, looks like downtown Flint. And this book was really fascinating. I would like to point out that as someone who's visited the area before, um, and been in the city many times, it does not look like this anymore. And it's very, very shocking to see how much has changed. When you look at city, city streets and lots of commerce and beautiful uh, buildings, and I should say some of these buildings still exist, and you, you can tell they really were um, impressive at the time they were built. So this was absolutely fascinating. And this kind of ties in, I should say that the book, Tear down, the one I keep referencing. Um, uh, things were not necessarily going well when he was growing up, if my understanding was correctly. I think things have gotten worse since when he was growing up. I don't know when he grew up. This would be so this is the problem. I returned that book to a library and it's raining today and I didn't want to go back out and fetch it. So I'm kind of doing this from memory. I want to say he grew up in the 70s, 70s in the, the city. That sounds about right. Um, I think things have gotten worse since the 70s. That would be my uninformed opinion. Um, so this is kind of right before that, I should say. But it, it kind of showcases the economic decline and it really hits home some of the economic decline. I really enjoyed seeing pictures of the factories. I This is kind of a, a side thing for me. I really like industry and infrastructure. Those are like two of my things. Kind of ties into why I like city planning books on urban development or how to plan cities or I don't know if civil engineering would fall under that. Like, why, why do we lay out streets the way we do? What's the best way to run a stop? Like, like, I love everything to do with that. I also love trains, planes, cars, automobiles, shipping, air traffic, international border crossings. I'm just fascinated by all that for some unknown reason. And apparently I'm also fascinated by factories. I should say, too, I've never worked in a factory. I'm not sure working in one would be very fun. But there's no denying that it can provide a lot of good jobs for a lot of people. Um, one thing I thought was interesting was the number of women who worked in factories. They really highlighted this woman at work and they talked about how the idea of women working in a factory was really popularized in World War II with Rosie the Riveter. But uh, I think this was Buick. Mm, AC Sparkplug, never mind. AC Sparkplug uh, had women who were working and not just in their offices, but like actually working. I assume they are assembling spark plugs. Um, I should say this too, I don't know anything about cars. That's kind of embarrassing. Another thing I really liked about this book is, as it tied in with Goran Young's Teardown, he spends one whole chapter at least talking about his interaction with the pastor of a church, kind of a church that had a primarily white congregation that wound up leaving the city. And so the church kind of closed, the, the, the denomination closed the church down. And then a black pastor brought, um, or started using the church. It was just a very interesting transition and I really liked those chapters in the book Teardown and this book had an entire chapter devoted to places of worship. And this is another reason why I think maybe when I return this book to the library before I put it in a little drop slot I'm going to go back and find the Teardown book and compare it because I don't remember which which church it was but it's if it was old enough it probably would be in here. So I want to go and actually find the church in this book so I could see what it looked like back in the day. Um, and also I could probably go on Google Maps and see what it looks like now. That would be kind of interesting. They probably have like a street view of it. Oh, here's another interesting, there was just so many interesting fun facts in these books. There was this church where they show, I remember this correctly, so they have a picture from 18, well I don't actually know when this picture was taken, 1885 maybe, and there's a steeple on it. And then here's another picture and there isn't a steeple on it. No one really knows where the steeple went. I think that's really funny. How do you lose a whole thing like this? I don't know. You don't just run off with that in the middle of the night, that's for sure. Uh, so it must have fallen off, been removed. I don't know. They, they made it seem like they couldn't really figure out why. Um, they had a lot of interesting schools and it, it's interesting to they had a whole chapter on school, I should say, and it was very interesting to see, called Kindergarten to College, how some of them, in the little description under each postcard, they have a little description sharing some history about it, how a lot of them were opened when the population was expanding with all the workers coming in to work at the factories, is what I assume drove the population expansion. And then also the date 
a lot of them also include a date they were shut down or torn down or consolidated as the population has now been shrinking. And I do not know if it's been shrinking in the last 10 years. I don't know if it's stabilized. Um, that would be something I would have to look up. But a number of these schools were listed as having to have been opened because the population was expanding. And some of these schools were also mentioned having to been shut down very recently due to population problems. Um, there's one more interesting thing in here. They showed a lot of beautiful homes. They showed this very, very, very not safe handmade bridge these workers made to get across a river easily. Um, and there was a little sign at the top that $5 fine to run, teeter, or loiter on this bridge by order of chief of police. So you will not be doing that on that bridge, which let me tell you, if I had to walk on that bridge, I'd be getting off of it as soon as possible. Okay. If I don't find this thing quickly, I'll just wrap this video up. I should have found it before. I thought it was going to be easy because everything else I was looking for I was able to find easily. I assume it's going to be here with the plants, perhaps. Do, do, do. Anyways, I can't find it right now. They showed um, a house that had been built basically out of scraps to accommodate some of the early workers. Okay, let me re restart this. So a lot of people came to work in the factories, seems to be my understanding from all these books and the other books that I've read. And when they did, they might not have come with very much. And they also needed a house. So a lot of them built them out of whatever scraps you had lying around. And in one of these books, there was a picture of one of these houses that was just pulled together from random scraps. And the caption was something along the lines of like, like no matter what your home is like, home is still a home. And that really struck me because basically I have nothing to complain about. I have my own apartment. It's nice. I have clean water. I have indoor plumbing. It's made out of solid construction materials and has been, I assume, under some sort of inspection to make sure it's safe. And that house had none of that. And the people in the picture were still, or at least appeared to be, just pleased that they had a home and a job and a place to live and work. And it really shows you how little we really have to complain about and how good we actually have it these days. So, and that, I should say I also gave this book a four star. These books were very, very good. I do not think there would be much interest unless you have a very specific interest in the area. And I think if you have a specific interest in Flint, in particular, this one would be the better one for it, as the Genesee County one didn't have a lot about Flint in particular. But if you're not necessarily interested in this area, but are interested in another area, maybe the place that you live in the United States or whatever country you live in, um, try to find regional books, because I assume there's going to be regional books like this that have really detailed, interesting history and a lot of fun facts about an area that you live in. So yeah, I'm going to try to find more of these. I found these very interesting, and I gave them four stars. If anyone has lived in the area, I would love to hear your thoughts on it, uh, both on the city, my reading on it, my take on this. I think it would be very interesting. And yeah, other than that, I'm going to go eat tacos now, so have a good day, everybody.